One, one, two, one, two. Shabbat Shalom. This week's Torah portion, Balak. Balak is a, is a king who hires a prophet named Bilam to curse the people of Israel before they enter into the land. But God confounds uh, Bilam and doesn't let him curse them, only allows him to, to praise them. And what, one of the, the praises that he says, we say every morning as we enter into a synagogue, Matovu Olecha Yaakov, Mishkinon Techa Yisrael, how, how beautiful are your tents, O Israel? Your, your tents, we could think of all the Jewish kids at camp right now. Your, your tents, your dwelling places, O Israel. But these Olecha, your, your tents, our rabbis say, that's the study houses that we Jews are studying Torah all the time. How do you say uh, a, a study house, 
a, a Beit Midrash. How do you say that in Yiddish? Shul. Welcome to Shul. So everybody, everybody turn to the person next to them and welcome them to Shul. Introduce yourselves to them. We, we have, of course, welcomed Sky Monroe, our, our board member, who is, who is leading services with us tonight, and welcome back to Mark. Welcome everybody online. And so, yes, Matovu Ohalecha Yaakov, he is playing. And so, let us welcome Shabbat with the lighting of lights. It's our honor to call up Gail Lobel and Stacy Murata. The candle blessing is on page two. Before we continue, we've been through, we Americans have been through a lot this week. I want to offer a, a prayer for our country. Oh God, we pray for our country, for its leaders and advisors, for officials elected and appointed for judges and legislators, local and national, through their words and deeds, their policies and their allocations. May they help establish in our midst peace and security, happiness and prosperity, justice and freedom for all. May our leaders be exemplars of humility and righteousness in their public and personal behavior, demonstrating respect for all people and inspiring righteous and respectful behaviors in other. When tragedies befall our country or attacks are launched, we pray for those who are deployed to rescue and defend and all those who care for and comfort survivors. We pray that those with any measure of power over others be restrained from misusing their power that resides in their hands. And may those who have been harmed know that we will listen to their cries. May citizens of all ages, races, and creeds appreciate what a great privilege it is to vote. May all efforts to thwart a citizen's ability to exercise that sacred right come to naught. May lively debate flourish among us, and yet may we forge a common bond to banish hatred and bigotry and to face and repair the damage done through our nation's long history of injustice, theft of land, of lives, of labor, and of equal rights. May we help bring to fruition again and again those among our national ideals that were unsullied by prejudice in which we may rightly feel pride. May our nation consume no more than our fair share of the world's resources and produce no more than our fair share of the world's pollutants. May this land become an influence for good and peace throughout the world. And may we as individuals and as a congregation play a positive role in it. Let us say... Amen. So now let us sing. We are on, sorry, we are on page 16.
Lechad Dodi is on page 20. We're singing verses 1, 2, 5, and 9. When we get to verse 9, there's a tradition of rising, facing the entrance as we welcome in Shabbat. Hati Karish is on page 26. Yitkada, the Yitkada Shame Rabba, Yamadi Brachute, Yamlich Malchute, Mecha Yehon of Yom, Mechon, Uvhaye de Hobe Israel, Bagala, Bagala, Uvisman Kari, Vimeru. Amen. <laughs> 
ישריחו לאלה מן כה ברכתה ושירתה תוש פחתה ונחמתה דמי רן ביאמה וימרו אמן. Let's pray on page 30. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons, and arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness from light, transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Tzavot is your name, ever-living God. May you reign continually over us into eternity. Praise are you, Adonai, who brings on the evening. Wisdom and wonder, passion and instruction, story and symbol. All these things your Torah gives to us. And the more we devote ourselves to it, the more it grows and gives. What could be a truer token of our abiding love than this holiest of your works and the living language that gives it form? <laughs> Shokpeha, Ukumeha, 
וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך, למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצותיי, והייתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים, להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אדוני אלוהיכם. אמן. In a world torn by violence and pain, a world far from wholeness and peace, give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. The heavens declare your glory. May earth reveal your justice and love. From bondage in Egypt, we were delivered. At Sinai, we bound ourselves to your way. Inspired by prophets and instructed by sages, time and again, we overcame oppressive forces. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God, keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let us continue to work for the day when the nations will be one and at peace. Then shall we rejoice as Israel did, singing on the shores of the sea. נאמר כי פדה אדוני את יעקב, גאולו מיד חזק ממנו, ברוך אתה אדוני, גאל ישראל. Blessed are you who redeems Israel. From page 42, השכי בינו. So, as we know, מי כמוך is very celebratory. השכי בינו always is a special time during the service for me. <coughs> Hashki Venu invites us to go more inward, preparing us for the Amidah that's coming soon. But it's a time of more silence, a time asking for protection. And so thinking of Rabbi's prayer um, for our leaders in this country, it's just maybe thinking about how we can offer protection both to ourselves, the people we love, and even people we don't even know. Hashki <coughs> Venu
Adonai, blessed are you, haparesu kachalom alenu, the one who spreads a sukkah, a shelter of peace over us. Ve'al kol amo Yisrael, all of the people of Israel, ve'al Yerushalayim, and over Jerusalem. Page 44. Shamru Lene Israel We turn to page 46. We'll begin the Amidah together on that page, and then we'll continue privately words of our heart, the words of our ancestors, which are on the even number of pages, or maybe our eyes, our heart leads us to the contemporary prayers on the odd number of pages. We continue our prayers through page 62 and 63. I ask you, please rise, and when you're finished with your prayers, you may be seated.
We pray for a Rafu Ashley Ma, Rufuata Nefesh, Rufuata Gufi, full healing of body, of spirit. We pray for our loved ones, and we also pray for our strength that we can bring healing to our loved ones by visiting them, by comforting them. This Shabbat, we are praying for Uri Ben Ahuva, Michal Altman. Larry Baum, Lauren Baum, Lindsay Baum, Alan Benjamin, Richard Benjamin, Larry Benson, Margot Blaustein, Cecily Bick, Ken Christ, Rona Cohen, Eleanor Dankner, Alan Goldstein, Harriet Goldstein, Lindsay Herbst, Harriet Hochberg, Paige Holt, Oliver Horn, Andy Jewell, Lawrence Keefe, Doc Konemund, Deborah Littman, Robert Magadoff, Joe Martinez, Lily Martinez, Reese Osmond, Donna Paris, Eileen Reinfleisch, Carol Rosenblatt, Dini Schlosser, Pearl Schlossman, Anjalit Shalit, Gunnar Shields, Zanita Swatinsky, Marjorie Van Dow, Lisa, Lisa Wolper, and Izzy Yagoda. If you're praying for someone like to say their name, please do so as I go around. Hey, it's a 
think of those. We pray for those in extended family who are right now fighting in the IDF. Itai Lubaton, Shira Feinberg, Metav Feinberg, Mayor Analek, Amina Dav Bloom, Evgitar Bloom, Lital Isachar, Yariv Sa'ar, Sharon Sa'ar, Ruven Colton, Netach Colton, Benjamin Carlton, Halel Tannenbaum, Harab Nimrod Peretz, Sol Ben Ziva. And we pray for, our, for the captives. This Shabbat, I would like to highlight Idan Stevie, who was 28. He was taken hostage by, by terrorists at the Supernova Desert Rave. And he volunteered to, to be a photographer at the event, but he just got there at 6 a.m. the day of the attack, right while the attack was happening. And so he turned around in his car his two friends in the car with him, Le Leora and Yulia, were, were killed. Their bodies were found, but his was not. But then it was um, verified that he is in Gaza. He studied environmental sciences at Tel Aviv, or er, and lives in Tel Aviv. Lover of nature, camping, and music. He's described by his family as a resourceful person who can survive in extreme conditions. He's planning to work in the energy sector to combat climate change, and we pray that someday he will. Our ancient piyut, our ancient prayer poem for captives. I want to talk about political violence. And I'm not, I'm not going to specifically talk about the assassination attempt from last week because we don't know much about it. We don't even know it was politically motivated, but it was an event that could have caused chaos. And that is part of politics these days. But I want to focus on an assassination that happens actually in this week's parasha. The last few verses of this week's Torah portion, Balak, the people of Israel are camped and the, the men, the Israelite men are, um, uses a very strong word in the Torah, but they're coming together with the Moabite women and then they're starting to sacrifice to the Moabite gods. The God of Israel gets very angry. The Eternal says to Moses, take all the ringleaders and have them publicly impaled so that Adonai's wrath may turn away from Israel. So Moses says to Israel's, Israel's officials, each of you slay those of his men who attach themselves to this foreign God. But just then, a certain Israelite man came 
and brought a Midianite woman over to his companions in the sight of Moses and the whole Israelite community who were weeping at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And then a man named Pinchas, son of Eleazar, son of Aharon, the priest, saw this. He left the assembly and taking a spear in his hand, he followed the Israelite man into his tent and stabbed both of them, the Israelite man and the woman through the belly. Then the plague against the Israelites was checked. Those who died of the plague numbered 24,000. Okay. Someone took justice into their own hands in the middle of everybody. I think that could be called an assassination. The beginning of next week's Torah portion, God speaks to Moses saying, Pinchas, the son of Eleazar, has turned back my wrath from the Israelites by displaying among them his passion for me, his zealousness for me. So I did not wipe out the Israelite people, but I grant him, Pinchas, a brit shalom, a covenant of peace, sometimes translated a pact of friendship. Okay, take a pause. I learned this, uh, uh, these comments that I'm going to teach, I learned from uh, Shai Held's book, The Heart of Torah. But what is this, this pact of peace, this breach shalom? Why does God reward someone who takes justice into his own hands, who assassinates someone, even though in the Torah there's a justice system, even though God told the people what to do, and it didn't seem like this is what they were supposed to do. Well, the, the ancient rabbis have a hard time with this, and they said, oh, well, maybe there was a quick trial, it just wasn't written about, or maybe, you know, this was so grievous that, it had to, that he had to take action. But what is this breach shalom that God makes? The 19th century commentator Naftali Svi Yehuda Berlin, also called the Nazif, says, in reward for calming the anger and wrath of the Holy Blessed One, God blessed him with the attribute of peace, that he should not be quick-tempered or angry. Since it is the nature of Pinchas's action, killing human beings with his hands, to leave an intense emotion, emotional unrest. Afterwards, the blessing he received was to be in a state of peace and tranquility. So it seems like our commentator here, our tradition here is a little uneasy even though the Torah says he's rewarded, the tradition is uneasy with that and says, well, God rewarded him, in quotes, with stillness, with ab being able to handle anger more productively, like I talked about last week. In fact, our, our rabbis tell stories of Pinchas as, the, as he ages, as how his zealousness for God becomes zealousness for himself and his own stature later. So it's ambivalent. Our tradition has this ambivalence about this assassination. The Torah seems to say it was good. Our the rabbis later seem to say, well, maybe at that point, but someone who does that turns into someone who is not good. Right? Okay. Another assassination from tradition. We're almost at, uh, next week is a minor fast day called the 17th of Tammuz, which is a fast remembering the breaching of the walls of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago by the Romans, who then three weeks later on the 9th of Av destroyed the temple. Hundreds of years before that on the 9th of Av, the Babylonians destroyed the first temple. And so the 9th of Av coming in the middle of August this year, or the second week of August this year, is a, also a fast day. But there's another fast day, a couple days after Rosh Hashanah, the third of Tishrei, that's related to this, but it's about an assassination. It's called Som Gedalia, the, the fast for Gedalia. Who was Gedalia? He was the governor of of Yehuda, of Judah, appointed by the Babylonians, those who destroyed the temple, then appointed a Jew to govern the province. So who, what might he be seen as? What's that? 
a turncoat, a collaborator, right? A man named Ishmael ben Netanya, who was a descendant of David in the royal family. He and a few of his friends assassinate him. Our ancient rabbis say, why do we fast on this day then? Isn't it a nice thing? Wouldn't it have been a good thing? They were causing a rebellion. They were causing, uh, you know, fighting back against the oppressors. Our ancient rabbis teach in the Tosefta that this fast day is, teaches you that the death of righteous people is as hard for God as the destruction of the temple. So, here, this is that we don't know much about Gedalia, but tradition says he was a righteous person, even though, you know, politically he was not popular. In our tradition, the temple was destroyed, we say, because of our sins. All of society, all of our society's sins, right? We don't, in Jewish tradition, blame the Babylonians, blame the Romans, even though, like, historically, yeah, big empires are going to destroy small kingdoms. But it's the political chaos within our society that causes these to happen, our tradition says. Our rabbis say the first temple was destroyed, idolatry. The second temple was destroyed because of baseless hatred among the Jews. I'm not saying that bad things happen <laughs> because of what we do. But our tradition does say this. And so political chaos comes from rhetoric baseless hatred. Political chaos comes from seeing your political opponent as your political enemy, a collaborator, a turncoat, uh, whatever you want to say, right? I pray I think, that we will get through these next few months in America. I'm not predicting, God forbid, chaos? I hope not. But I think, I know over the last almost nine years, we as a country, maybe longer than that, need to think about how we speak to each other, how we see our political opponents, how we create a community out of difference. Shabbat Shalom. Pretty soon we'll have Alenu, which talks about all of us coming back together. But we will come, we as a, a community of peace, will come together for dinner after services uh, in the Arresti Social Hall. I forgot, whoops, sorry, forgot to, I forgot to ask, is someone sponsoring the dinner tonight? I don't know, we'll find. It's not sponsored, okay. But please join us. And please, there are opportunities to sponsor our Shabbat dinner uh, throughout the summer. So let us turn to page 282 at the bottom of the page for Alenu, and please rise. Alenu le Adon hakol Vatet yotze breishit Shelo asanu ke goye haratzon Velo samanu ke mishvachot adama Shelo sam chelkenu kahem Vegor aleinu ke chohamonam Vanachnu korim Umishtachamim umodim Lipne melech Malche Hamlachim Haka Baruch. Let's pray on two eighty five. 
Let the time not be distant, O God, when all shall turn to you in love, when corruption and evil shall give way to integrity and goodness, when superstition shall no longer enslave the mind, nor idolatry blind the eye. O may all created in your image become one in spirit and one in friendship, forever united in your service. Then shall your realm be established on earth, and the word of your prophet be fulfilled. Adonai will reign forever and ever. 287. <laughs> Please be seated. We think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died at this season in years past, those whom we have drawn into our hearts with our own. If you are here to say Kaddish for a loved one, when you hear their name, if you're able, if you're comfortable, please rise so that we as a community can support you. We continue to be in the period of Shloshim, the first month of mourning for Maestro Robert Austin Boudreau. And this week marks the yard site, the anniversary of the death of Gregory P. Argand, B. Mark Cohen, Ada Dannenberg, Esther Dine, Molly Dworetsky, Adolf Fisher, Sherry Goldman, Nathan S. Haberman, Eva Hess, Shirley Hillowitz, Lillian Katzman, Sarah Litwin, Gloria Lowenthal, Carolyn McVicker, Irving Milstein, Harvey Phillips, Catherine Podolsky, Mary Rabinowitz, Samuel L. Riskin, Hannah Batlazar Rubel, Yitzhak Ben Menashe Rubel, Harry Schlager, Beatrice Schulman, Pearl Silverstein, Alfred Spur, Irving Tepperberg, Sarah Wachtel, Albert M. Weiss, Nathan Weissman, Daniel Weitz, Joseph White, and Yosef Issachar. If we're remembering someone whose name was not mentioned, and you'd like to say their name, please do so as I go around. May their memories be for blessing the mourner's Kaddish. It's on page 294. Please rise. Yitzgadal, Amen. Le'olam o'amei amaya. Yitbarach yishtabach. Yitpar v'yitromam v'yitnase. Yitadar v'yitalev v'yitalal. Shemei d'kudusha v'richu. Le'ela minko berchata v'shirata. Tush berchata v'nechemata. Damiran v'alma v'imru. Amen. Yehei shlama raba min shmaya. V'chayim aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael. Vimru, Amen. O se shalom bim romav, hu ya se shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael. Vimru, Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all of Israel, to all of the world, to which we say, Amen. Kiddush is on page five. Can I make Emerson lead us in Kiddush? Yes. Oh. <laughs> 
Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Okay. 